the idea of an automated nuclear retaliation system, one that could strike back even if a country's leadership had been wiped out, has long haunted strategists and policymakers. United States was the first to try this approach with a program called Chrome Dome. Its architect was General Thomas Power, a man who by all accounts was obsessed with nuclear strategy. Colleagues joked that Power didn't think nuclear war was something to avoid, so much as something you could learn to win. Chrome Dome kept bombers in the air around the clock. Dozens of B-52s armed with nuclear weapons endlessly circling the borders of the Soviet Union. That posture produced a string of accidents the Pentagon long tried to hush up. Goldsboro, North Carolina in 1961, when a B-52 broke apart and two Mark 39 bombs fell, one of them went through almost every step toward detonation, halted only by a single safety switch. Palomar, Spain in 1966, where a mid-air refueling collision sent 400 bombs plummeting to Earth and spread plutonium contamination that the US quietly worked to clean up. And Tule, Greenland in 1968, where a crash on the ice scattered radioactive debris across the frozen landscape. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, secret defense institutes began developing their own solution. Under the lead of Chief Designer Major General Vladimir Yaronich, engineers and mathematicians worked on what became known as Perimeter, what the West later called Dead Hand. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, some of the engineers who had worked on the system fled to the United States and Europe, where they began revealing its secrets. The goal, as they explained, was terrifyingly simple to create a system capable of automatically unleashing the nation's nuclear forces in a retaliatory strike, even if no human command remained alive to give the order. A model was provided where the system could independently generate a missile launch order almost without human involvement, analyzing factors indicating that control points were disabled and factors of a nuclear explosion were recorded. Here's how Dead Hand is said to work. First, there's activation. In times of heightened danger, the political military leadership can switch the system on. Then sensors across the country watch for unmistakable signs of a nuclear attack. Flash signatures from explosions, sudden spikes in radiation, seismic shock waves, abrupt drops in atmospheric pressure, and similar cues. The system's logic applies a dead hand test. It checks whether nuclear detonations appear to have occurred on Russian territory and whether communications with top command have been severed. If both conditions are met, the system moves to retaliate. Immediately afterward, a specially built command missile is launched a guided rocket carrying a powerful transmitter rather than a warhead, and it flies a pre-planned route across Russian territory, broadcasting authenticated launch codes on hardened channels. Surviving launch units, siloed ICBMs, mobile ground systems, submarines and air bases pick up the signal, and according to pre-arranged plans, fire at assigned targets. The result is a near-automatic fulfillment of the promise of mutual assured destruction. For decades, the program was shrouded in secrecy. But in 2011, the commander of Russia's strategic missile forces, General S. Karakayev, publicly acknowledged the existence of Perimeter and said it remained operational. It operates on a uh, qualitatively uh, new level in several parameters and continues to improve because it is not a system that can be, as they say, written off and become obsolete in the near future. No? China, by contrast, followed a different path. Traditionally, it adhered to a doctrine of minimum deterrence and pledged not to be the first to use nuclear weapons. Since about 2020, however, Beijing has been expanding its nuclear forces, building many new silo fields in remote deserts, deploying additional road mobile launchers, commissioning more strategic submarines and experimenting with advanced and hypersonic delivery systems. In 2019, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that Russia was assisting its Chinese partners in creating a missile attack warning system. Tell me in the comments, do you think it's normal that one country holds the entire world at gunpoint? <laughs>